Welcome to Fertile Minds. Um, I'm going to talk about polycystic ovary or PCOS. My name is Robert LaHood. I'm a fertility specialist or reproductive endocrinologist and I work as a clinical director at the IVF Australian North Shore Clinic. Can you conceive naturally with PCOS? Yes, patients can conceive naturally with PCOS. Um, the first thing that's really important is to understand that not all women with PCOS don't ovulate. Some women ovulate infrequently and it only takes one ovulation to fall pregnant. So sometimes no treatment is required. In other patients, a small modification lifestyle with a better diet and exercise can help them to lose some weight and they then start to ovulate more regularly and fall pregnant. And from a medication point of view, the main treatment is called letrozole, which is a simple tablet which is inexpensive, causes minimal side effects and, and helps three quarters of women to ovulate better. Um, if um, after six cycles of ovulation uh, or in cases where the partner has a very bad sperm count, for example, then we sometimes we may go to more advanced treatments like IVF. And the good news is that women with PCOS do really well when they have IVF treatment because they have so many eggs. And so we have more eggs and more embryos to work with. So generally, there are lots of options and, and the treatment is very successful. PCOS, um, I've, I've been working in the field for 20 years and it's something that I've always felt very passionate about. And what I wanted to share with you today is, is a bit of what, what's changed in the last 20 years. First of all, the diagnosis of PCOS has changed and the three diagnostic criteria which were introduced, introduced in 2002 uh, include polycystic ovaries, which are ovaries, lots of follicles or eggs. Um, it includes irregular periods or absent periods. Um, and it includes some symptoms and signs of high levels of testosterone, which might be adult acne or hirsutism, which is the development of um, coarse facial and body hair. Um, and you only need two of those three diagnostic criteria to have PCOS. Uh, furthermore, um, because of the new diagnostic criteria, the prevalence has gone up a lot. But one in six women have this condition. It, if it's that common, it's really a normal part of reproduction and, and and life and so a lot of women have this and, and there'll be people you'll know who have PCOS and that's why it's really important to understand about the condition. Over the years we've learned that we underdiagnose the condition and, and that's been what a lot of patients have said to us, they really want to know have I got it or have I not and, and in the old days there was a lot of stigma associated with PCOS about the rate of miscarriage, being obese and, and, and all these sort of things and because of that doctors were um, often reluctant to call PCOS PCOS but if someone has it, we should diagnose and we should deal with the problems and that's what we try to do nowadays. Um, another drug was metformin and we still use it, but in the early 2000s this was a really popular medication and even though it does help in certain circumstances, it hasn't turned out to be quite as useful as we thought it would, but it can help with managing metabolic symptoms of PCOS such as in impaired glucose tolerance and diabetes and it can help to regulate periods in some patients and we use it sometimes in conjunction with Clomid, which is another fertility drug. But I guess in my time from a medical point of view, letrozole is a drug that's really taken over a lot. It's, it's, it's a great medication. It's very effective at causing, uh, achieving ovulation with about 75% of women ovulating better. It also is much safer than Clomifencetrate or Clomid, the older medication, because it causes less twins and it's really well tolerated. So it's a great, medication and that uh, we use you know very regularly we have been for the last eight or ten years and it seems to be very safe and very effective um, I think the other thing that that's been fascinating to me is to realize that as women get older PCOS changes and that's really important to, to say that you present in a certain way now but things might be very different in the future and, and that's a good thing to know as women get older they have less eggs in the ovaries and the PCOS that was really strong with the symptoms in the younger years becomes lesser. So periods become more regular and, and that's a good thing. And, and so I think that's important to understand that it doesn't always stay the same. Um, also to say that um, not all patients with PCOS are overweight. We have a lot of slim um, women who have PCOS and in the old days that was a, a way of um, you know, basically, if, unless you're overweight, you couldn't have it. But we realize now that um, just as many slim women have PCOS. And around the world, if you look at, at the Asian countries, uh, Europe, we're all a bit different in the way uh, our body shape is and, and how much we weigh and our body mass index changes. And so that's really important not to generalize. It comes back to that we're all different 
And in the in the new era of individualized medicine, I think we shouldn't generalize, and that's one of the big things we've learned over the years. Look, finally, one of the things that when I first started, um, polycystic ovaries and ultrasound, which is how we diagnose polycystic ovaries, doesn't always equal polycystic ovary syndrome. So there are many women with polycystic ovaries, especially when they're younger, who never have a symptom of polycystic ovary syndrome. And, and this is something that we had to clarify over the years. And, and so, uh, and that's another important point to make. So. I guess to summarize over the last 20 years, things have changed. And um, so it's really um, good to kind of look back at that. And I'm sure things will continue to change. I think as we're all very individual, um, it's really important not to generalize too much and target any treatment to the individual patient. So we, with that all said, um, uh, there are several um, resources that we have available. Um, one of the um, good a piece of literature. Um, there's a website called Ask PCOS. Let's ask a question. Um, you can look that up. There's lots of information about PCOS. At IVF Australia, we run a PCOS clinic to help people with PCOS related um, problems. So feel free to make an appointment. Um, and, and there are obviously lots of um, focus groups and um, uh, to, to help um, discuss these issues. Um, so look, I hope that this has helped to give you a bit of an overview about PCOS and um, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching Fertile Minds and don't forget to subscribe.